Ask for a revival in your life. Ask for a revival in your school, in your place of work. Ask for a revival in the United States and in this whole world because we need more of Jesus and we need more of his presence in our life. like a river wash over me immerse me in water as deep as the sea
King of love hath given up his life. The darkest day in history. They run across that may for sickness. For every course of one who had done. One final bread and this was finished. But not the end we could have known. For the earth began to shake. The veil was torn. What sacrifice was made? As the heavens roll. Oh, happy Jesus. Oh, happy Lord of heaven. 
for the Savior of the world, the King of glory. The Bible says, open wide, O gates, and let the King of glory come in. You and I serve a God that has not lost one battle. You and I serve a God that does not rest on your behalf. You and I serve a God that the earth is his footstool. What a great God we serve. That is the God that you and I praise and worship today. The God that has not lost one bottle on your behalf. Maybe today you're like a little unsettled and a little swirly and uneasy, right? With there's so much going on in the world with the news that we heard yesterday, Iran bombing Israel. And you're like, you know what? That's okay, but I'm living a war internally right now. I don't know how I'm gonna pay my rent. I don't know what's going on in my marriage. I have this depression that I can't shake off. And I wanna tell you that we serve a God that hasn't lost one battle, amen? He hasn't lost the battle and he's not gonna start now. So if that's you today, and if you're facing something that you're like, I don't know, I'm unsure, I'm uneasy. I believe there's fresh faith in the room today for you. I believe there's fresh courage in the room. I'm gonna ask you to raise your hands right now. If that's you, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hands right now. And I'm gonna ask you just to declare with your own words, God, you are for me. If you are for me, who can be against me? Oh God, you have not lost one battle. God, you have not lost one battle. God, you see my situation. You see what I'm facing. You see the giants before me. But I know you're a God that with slings and stones, you empower us to destroy the giants before us. You empower us to face what we're facing before us, God. So I ask you, Father, in this morning and in this day, release faith, fresh faith and fresh courage for whatever my brothers and sisters are facing this morning. Amen? Amen and amen. Woo! Come on. Come on, Jesus. All hail the King. All hail the King. He is the King. He is King. He will return. And that is our hope this morning. Amen? Well, you guys look amazing this morning. Why don't you give your neighbor a high five, a fist bump, a hug, whatever your faith level is at, say hello. And if you're watching us from that camera, we bless you, we love you. We just pray that that same amazing, precious presence that is here is there where you're at. Well, happy Sunday, everybody. Are you guys excited to be here? I'm excited to be here as well. Super happy to be here this morning. It's been an amazing, amazing month already. I mean, just Easter Sunday and on, I think the services have been amazing. What God has been doing, even in Numa night this week, was awesome as well. I wasn't there, but I heard it, and the presence came to my home because the next morning I woke up super better. I was dealing with a cold. So I just want to welcome everybody that's here for the first time. If this is your first time in Numa Church, I just want to say that you are in a safe place, and we have just so many amazing things for our new guests. At the end of the service, Pastor Chris is gonna be in our welcome lounge out through those glass doors to your left with a gift and waiting to connect and pray for you. And we have amazing systems in place to make this huge space that is Numa Church a small space and to connect you with amazing people. That's Growth Track. At the end of the service, there's our Growth Track as well so you guys can connect it and plug it in there. Alrighty, so we just welcome you. And if you are that person that is new here in your seat front pocket, there's gonna be a connect card. So I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and fill that out. You could put it in the black boxes or give it to one of our ushers in the blue shirts. We would love to connect with you, all righty? Amen. Okay, so who's ready for some announcements? Who's ready for some announcements? Any parents in the room? I'm, par I'm a parent. Yes, okay, so if you're a parent, I want you to know that we have something really amazing set up. It's a cybersecurity um, workshop. It's for our school, our Numa Christian Academy, which is our school. My two daughters go there. Amen. Two daughters. She's just in school, the, the little one this week, so that's awesome. So, but we want to also extend it to the church because we understand what cybersecurity to teenagers and preteens means. This is a really big and important thing. And if you're a parent or grandparent, you want to know more about that, 
Thursday, April 18th at 9 a.m. here. We will be having the workshop, and we want to extend it to the church as well. So please, please, please make sure that you come. I mean, if you're like, no, you know what? I don't know anything about cyber. I don't even know my passwords. You know, you have the same password for everything. Come. If you're a parent and you're in that situation, come. This, this, this may be for you, okay? So I just want to make sure that you guys know Thursday, 9 a.m. here, all righty? Who's going to come? I know I'm going to come. It's going to be amazing. And then we have some other announcements here in, um, on video. So why don't you guys listen up? cycle of life is only active el ciclo espiritual de la vida solamente está activado when we're imparting life cuando estamos dando vida love one another as you have been loved ama el uno al otro así como tú has sido amado the bottom line is this pero la realidad es esta if you want to be blessed si tú quieres ser bendecido you got to be a blessing tú tienes que ser una bendición Here we have food distribution happening, we have eye exams happening for people, we have medical screenings happening, we have fun for the kiddos, we have food trucks, it's a great time. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, we're all human. What would it look like to unite with thousands of neighbors across South Florida? Let's help families that need it most. Well, I'm just like helping people, it feels like really good. Really... Sometimes people are in positions in their life where they don't have something, so being able to give back to them. It's just been smiling faces, and as the people come through, they're, they're greeted with a smile, no judgment. That's what Good Neighbor Days is all about. Every Saturday in the month of May, join thousands of volunteers and community champions across South Florida. We would like to encourage other organizations to join this dynamic opportunity to serve. Do it. You don't need permission to serve your community. You can do it yourself or you can join an organization such as this. Because when you show love to a city, that's where change really happens. Grab some friends, join the team. Choose your Saturday, choose your neighborhood. Then show up in May and be a good neighbor. We make doing good easy. Goodneighbordays.org Uno, dos, dos. I just want to say, guys, if you're not connected to a small group, what are you waiting for? Let me tell you, so much life happens there. I want to just, um, Fanny, you're an amazing woman. This woman in, in the Zumba classes, she has prizes. We dance. We receive something spiritual because you know we are mind, body, and soul, and we just get it all connected in that. So if you're not connected in a small group, if you don't have a community of people that you're doing life with, connect. This life is not meant to be lived alone, okay? I just want to encourage you guys. So at the end of the service and information booth, please sign up in a small group as well. And I don't know if you saw that video of the Good Neighbor Days. We are having an amazing all-out serve day, a mega serve day. And we are uniting with this campaign, the Good Neighbor Campaign, May 4th. When is it? May 4th. And we want, we want to bless our community. We want to bless our community. You see, in order to show the love of Christ, faith without works is dead, the Bible says. So that day, we want to put our faith in action. We want to put our money where our mouth is, like they say in English, right? So we want to be able to bless them with goods, household goods. We want to have a fun day for our kids. We're going to have bounce houses. We're going to have food. We're going to have activities. So I want you guys to come, number one, right? And number two, 
Bring people that don't know God that day. Bring people that don't know Jesus. Bring people that may not come to a service like this, but they'll come to a, an amazing, fun-filled fair where we have food. Free, it's free, 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 free 99, free, all right? So just come, and they're going to be impacted by the love of God. And I believe you will too. Amen? So who's going to come May 4th? All righty, May 4th, we will see, may the 4th be with you. We will see you there. Star, Star, Star Wars fans, my husband is one too. Love you guys, and I know that today, prepare your hearts. Because today God has an amazing and powerful word set up for you. We love you. Why don't we give it up for Pastor Chris Garcia. All right. Good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing today? You guys good? You guys need some coffee? We got coffee outside, guys. I see you guys like a little bit low energy and stuff like that. And I'm like all excited because today one of what we're going to share today's topic is one of those passion points that I'm excited about. But before we get into that, I want us to take a moment and uh, I want to take a moment and pray for one of our pastors here at the house, uh, Pastor Larry Pacheco. He's part of our uh, board of elders. He's part of our board of trustees. Uh, since yesterday morning, he's in the hospital. Uh, he's been having some issues in his intestines. So they're checking him to see if he's going to need some surgery, uh, exactly what's going on. And uh, he's a valuable part of our family. You might not see him here every week, but uh, let me tell you something. He's been here for over 20-something years working with us. And uh, like I said, he's one of those guys that his imprints are part of everything that we do here at NUMA. So can we bow our heads real quick? We just want to pray healing over his body right now. Father, I want to give you thanks, Lord for the opportunity that you give us to gather as a body today, to worship you, to exalt you, to declare that there's no God like you, Lord. Father, and in the midst of all the circumstances that are going on around us, Lord. Father, this, what it does, Lord, is that it makes us focus more on you and our need for you. And today we want to lift up Pastor Larry before you, my God. I pray in Jesus' name that you would be with him, Lord. Right now in that hospital room, give wisdom to the doctors, Lord God, as they look at the diagnosis of what's going on and what needs to be done. I pray that you would comfort him, Lord, remove all the pain that he has in his abdomen area, Lord. And I declare, your word says that by your stripes, Jesus, we are healed. So we are speaking healing over Pastor Larry Pacheco this morning, Lord God, and Holy Spirit. As we pray, we also ask that you would be with us this morning as we share your word. My God, I declare that your word is sent out and it doesn't return void, but it accomplishes everything, Lord God, for which you're sending it. In other words, Lord, the purpose for which you've gathered here today and we are here is to hear you speak to our hearts. So I pray that you would change us to be more like Jesus. We give you the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all say amen and amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Thank you, Emerson. Um, Julie mentioned, you know, uh, what we've been seeing in the news about the missile attack from Iran uh, to Israel. And as we look at all these things, I have nothing uh, to, to say but to say we are closer and closer every day to the end times. I want to tell you that. All right, and I don't want you guys to freak out. I don't want you guys to think that, you know, World War III is breaking out. Actually, this is a call to prayer, you know, and this is a scripture that we don't have on screen, but this morning as I was home and I was praying, I was remembering 1 Timothy 2, 2 and 1, and it says this, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, and intercession and thanksgiving be made for all people. Who should we be praying for? All people, according to this. But especially for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in godliness and holiness. So what does it say that we need to pray for? For our leaders. We need to pray for those people that are in a position of leadership, of government, you know, so that God would give them wisdom on how to handle all these things that are going on around us. All right. So I just wanted uh, to say that this morning as we continue today with part two or the second teaching of the series that we started last week. Do you guys know what the series is called? You asked for it, all right? And it was funny because this, you know, this week I was talking to someone, like, Pastor, that teaching that you brought on dealing with difficult people, 
They're like, man, I, I needed that. That was like for me, you know. And, and, and I go, which part? And he goes, the part of patience. And I'm like, you're kidding me. And he goes, yeah, you don't understand everything that happened to me this week to work out that patience area in my life. I'm like, tell me what happened. He goes, well, my car got towed. I'm like, oh, man, this is starting bad. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he parked somewhere and his car got towed. And then he was somewhere else. And then something happened with a person that was there. And then he had to pay a fine somewhere else. And, and he goes, Pastor, you got to be careful with these teachings that you're giving. And I'm like, listen, I wouldn't be preaching this if you didn't ask for it. You know, I'm like, you guys asked for it. And that's why we're preaching this series, all right? So hopefully what I'm going to teach today you know, it's going to be, you know, a little bit more calm, you know, not as crazy, all right. But today, the question that we're going to be tackling, which is so exciting, is how do I discover God's purpose for my life? That was uh, one of those top questions that came up when we did the survey. And if you're new or you haven't been here in a couple of weeks, you're like, what survey are you talking about? It's a survey that we did on Resurrection Sunday. All right, of which are some of the teachings that you guys wanted to hear us speak to you guys about. So the second one that we're going to tackle is what? How do I discover, what? How do I discover God's purpose? What a big question. What a very big question we're going to talk uh, about today. And as we start to talk about God's purpose, I don't know if this happened to you guys and Especially I see young people in this room. Maybe you guys go through this, you know. But I remember when I was young, you know, I used to sometimes lay there in the bed and I was like, man, I wonder what's God's purpose for my life. You know, uh, I, I would look at the world and I would look at the heavens and, and everything that was so big, you know, and, and everything. I'm like, man, I wonder what part I play in this whole thing. Does my life even have a meaning? You know, why am I here now? You know, these were all questions that I was having growing up, you know. But when you're young, you know, you're 16, you're 17. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I was living for the weekend, you know. I was like, man, I couldn't wait for Friday to come around. You know what I'm saying? And then once it was Sunday afternoon, I was like, oh, my God, here comes the week. I got to go back to school and back to this. And then when it was getting to Thursday, I'm like, all right, the weekend is almost here. And I don't know how many of you guys felt like that, but I thought that it was interesting that there's actually a book, all right, written by a guy named uh, We Told uh, Rymbolski. And it's called Waiting for the Weekend. Can you believe that somebody wrote a book on this? And, 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 the, and what the book is talking about, you know, is that when you don't understand what you're called to do, all you're looking is for this certain moment of happiness, you know, and you're banking everything on those 48 hours and then the rest of the week just waiting for that time to come. And I was like, wow, that's a pretty miserable way of living. Because if, if I'm living today, I'm like, man, what a bad day, bro. I, I can't believe it's Monday. I just need, you know, Tuesday. And then Tuesday, oh, my God, this is horrible. You are missing out on life. You're missing out on life. Why? Because life is moving, guys. Life is going quick. This morning I was, you know, shaving and I was looking at all these gray hairs on this beard. I'm like, when did this happen? I was like, where did all these gray hairs come from? You know, and then my wife was like, I like the gray hairs. Don't even try doing that just for men thing. You know what I'm like, don't worry, I'm not. I'm not going to do it. I'm like, I'm just, all I'm saying is that life is moving quickly and I don't want to waste it. You know, and when you hear all these news of things that are going on, you know, I don't know when it's going to be my last day. So I want to make sure that I'm living them out. Actually, today, this afternoon, when we finish all the services and, you know, I get some lunch, I'm actually going to go today to the burial of a pastor from our city. You know, and I don't know how many of you guys saw the news of a pastor here in northwest Miami-Dade that was stabbed, okay, in his church grounds last Saturday. And, uh, and, uh, and it was, he was allowing a church parishioner, church member, to stay on church property in one of the little rooms and there was some mishap that happened, and uh, he told the guy that he needed to get out. So he called the locksmith to come and, and change the door. And when the locksmith left and the guy's coming out with his stuff, he just got a knife and stabbed him twice on the neck and killed him. This pastor that I've served on different boards of the city with him. I've known this guy for over 15 years. He has four children, like the age of my kids. All right? Past, he died on the grounds of his own church. An amazing man. Who would have told him? You, know, you want to know something even crazier? 
we would text during the week, and he texted me Saturday morning, all right, around 11.52 a.m., and this happened at 2.30 in the afternoon. I have his text on my phone. So why am I telling you this? I'm not telling you this to get you sad. I'm not, that's not my purpose, actually. I want you guys to be happy here, you know, as I speak today. But what I want to tell you is that our days are short, and we don't know when the Lord is going to call us home. So I want to make sure that each and every day I'm living on point. You know, and I'm not just wasting my life away, you know. So, so today we're going to talk a little bit uh, about that, you know, because when you don't understand your purpose, you know, it could be pretty troubling. And I have some quotes here of, of, of some people that throughout history have questioned this whole thing of purpose. And there's this quote from a guy named Leo Tolstoy. He was a Russian novel writer. And look what this guy wrote. He goes, then what is life for? It's a question. Is it to die? To kill myself at once? No, I'm afraid. To wait for death till it comes? I fear that even more. Then I must live. But for what? In order to die? Imagine that. So here's a guy, that famous guy. He's a novel writer and all these things. And he's questioning Life. Then you have Ernest Hemingway. How many of you guys have heard of Ernest Hemingway? All right, you go to Key West and they take you to Ernest Hemingway's house and all these things. You know that he was an atheist? He didn't believe in God. And he actually committed suicide. That's how he ended up dying. And in one of his writings, he goes, Life is just a dirty trick, a short journey from nothingness to nothingness. I was like, Oh boy, what, what, what a sad way to live. And then one last one. Uh, this philosopher and poet, Henry Tudor, he, he said, the mass of men live lives of quiet desperation. In other words, you don't tell the people that are around you, but there's this quiet desperation. Like, why am I here? What am I supposed to do? You know, when, when, when we look at the first person in the Bible to actually write about this, you know, he was the king of Israel at that moment, King Solomon. You know, and, and in the Bible, you know, he is the richest, wisest person living at his time, you know. And this guy, Solomon, he, he had it all. He had tried it all, you know. And he's looking for the meaning of life. And Ecclesiastes 1, uh, verse 2, that's the first reading we're going to look at here. He, he says this, he goes, everything is meaningless, says the teacher, completely meaningless. You imagine living like that? I'm like, is that the Bible? Yeah, bro, that's not a guy that's in depression. It sounds like a guy in depression. Like, what? This is like meaningless. You know, that's how he introduces his book. That's verse 2 of the first chapter of Ecclesiastes. And he concludes the book by saying, hey, all this is meaningless. Listen, he had riches, power, status, education, he, he, he had sex, he had adrenaline, he had knowledge, he had done all these things. And listen, it could give you a temporary fix, but at the end of the day, you're going back to that feeling like, what am I supposed to do? You know, what, what, what am I here for, you know? So uh, as we talk about this, you know, I want you to think about your life. I want you to think, okay, how are you in, in these questions that we ask? Because, you know, as I, I look across the room and I see you guys this morning, maybe you're like, you know, Pastor, these are some questions that I have. I was one of those that wrote on that survey, what is the purpose of God for my life? I, I want to hear what God has to say because I, I can't believe that we're born to, you know, to go to school, you know, to, to go to school and then find a job later on and then get married. And then after you get married, you buy a house. And then after you buy a house, then the kids come and, and you have children. And then you're raising children, you know. And then maybe later on in life, you change your career, you change your job, and then you retire, and then you die. And then that was life. Uh, you know, maybe you're thinking, I'm like, I don't want my life to look like that. Let me tell you, as your pastor, I don't want your life to look like that. <laughs> I don't want it to look like that, all right? There, there's more. So, you need to have a clear reason to exist like Jesus, you know. And when we look at Jesus, for example, John chapter 18, if you could go with me to your Bibles, John 18, verse 37, Jesus is standing in front of Pilate. He was the governor. Pilate was the governor of the Romans there in Israel at that moment in Jerusalem. And 
And Pilate said to him, so you are a king? And Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. So Jesus was clear about his purpose. Jesus is clear. Hey, listen, I'm a king and I've come to testify of the truth of God. To, to set things straight, you know. As I stand up here this morning, I know God's purpose for my life. You know, I know that, you know, God's purpose for my life. And, and this is, you know, I, I found out through time is to help people connect with God. And is to help people encounter him. And as a pastor, one of my greatest desires is to put platforms for you to encounter him and that God would become real in your life no matter what situation you're going through. I'll go into a meeting and I know that if you give me 45 minutes with somebody that is going through a very difficult situation, if you give me an opportunity to talk to him about the God that I believe in, what he's done in my life and how real I think he is, I really believe there's a chance of God changing that person. Because that has to do with God's purpose for my life. You know? Now, as we are here today, I, I want to make sure that you understand God's purpose for your life, all right? So today I want to share with you guys three things that I think that they will help you discover and understand God's purpose for your life. Number one, write this down. If you're taking notes, all right, God created you with a purpose. That's number one. You need to understand this. I, I want that to sink in for a moment. Okay, you're not here just to fill in a gap of time and then just to die and go to heaven. Okay, there's more to your life than that. I, I want to say it like this. No one in this room is an error. Nobody in this room is an accident. They might have told you that, oh, you were born unexpectedly. Yeah, you were unexpected for your parents, but you were not unexpected for God. You know, you were not unexpected. For example, my birth. You know, my, 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 my mom had two miscarriages before me. You know, she wasn't supposed to have kids anymore. My mom was 42 years old when I was born. All right? So I was not supposed to be here on medical terms. But God had a purpose. And I want to tell you that same thing for you. God created you with a purpose. So I want you to understand something. You don't need to be worried about life. You know, I had people the other day, you know, guys, remember the eclipse on Monday last week? Everybody was excited about the eclipse. It's the world coming to an end. There's this eclipse, you know, and, and what does this mean biblically? And then you go online and everybody's talking about these prophetic signs and everything else about the eclipse. And should I be worrying? You don't need to worry. Why don't you need to worry? Because God has a purpose for your life. And the day that the Lord says your purpose is done, that's the time you go home, not before. I want to tell you this. Sickness is not the one that determines when you go to meet God. Your purpose is the one that determines when you go to meet God. John the Baptist in the Bible, who was a young guy, probably in his 30s. And you know what? In his 30s, his purpose was done. And that's it. What did God do? He took him home. That's it. Jesus. How long was Jesus here for? 33 years. 33 years, man, and three years of ministry. Man, I've been in ministry a lot longer than three years, bro. Jesus got it done in three years. It's like, that's it, man. I'm done. Purpose, you know. So I want you to know something. Look at me real quick. Each of you guys in this room have significance. Each of you guys in this room have value. Each of you guys in this room have purpose. Can you tell that to your neighbor? You have purpose. Now tell your other neighbor, you have purpose. All right, so I'm positive about life because I know I was created with a purpose, and God will bring it to pass. Look, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, the Apostle Paul is talking about this. Now, I'm just going to read the first part of it. He, goes to, he says this, for he chose us in him. Who chose us? God. God chose us in him before the creation of the world. To be holy and blameless in his sight. Okay, pay attention to that. God chose you before the beginning of the world. Okay, that's too vast. 
for us to comprehend. Maybe today you're like, Pastor, and when did the world begin? Was a millionaire? That's not what I'm talking about today. <laughs> but before the world began, all right, listen to that verse, okay? God had chosen you. So I'm going to give you a definition of purpose, all right? This is the PC definition of purpose right here, all right? Pastor Chris' definition. Purpose is the intent for which God created you, the reason you were born. That's it. Purpose is the intent for which God created you, the reason for which you were born. I want to say it like this. Whatever you were born to do, look at this, guys, is built inside of you. Whatever you were born to do is built inside of you. I'm, I'm going to give you some examples for you to understand this, all right? Okay, fish don't go to swimming school. Have you ever seen a fish in a swimming school? No, right? They hang out in schools. That's what you call like a group of fish. But they're not in school to learn to swim. Why? Because swim is built inside the fish. All right? I'm going to give you another example. Birds. Have you ever seen a bird in flight school before? No? No. <laughs> Why don't birds go to flight school? Because flying is built inside of them. Now, if you want to learn to fly, oh, boy, you need to do I don't know how many hours of flight school. You got to go, you know, go and practice and this and that. And we have a couple of pilots here at NUMA. So I have a friend. He comes here in the second service. He's been working for American Airlines for like 35 years. I don't know how many hours of flight. But he has to go and renew constantly his license. A bird doesn't need to, oh, man, my license is expired, bro. I need to go find out what's happening. Because flight is in here. All right, a seed doesn't need to go to a seminar of how trees grow. Why? Because the tree is built inside the seed. What I'm trying to tell you is that whatever you were created for is in here. And a lot of you guys are looking for something from out there to help you do something in life. No, it's in here. So today, I, I want to tell you this, and, 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 and whoever created the iPhone, okay, the manufacturer of this phone, he knows what he was building with it, all right? And he knows that, man, when you click on this app right here, it's supposed to open a calendar, and when you click on this app right here, you know, it's supposed to open your notes, so you take notes, and you could even have a flashlight on this thing. The manufacturer of this put all that into this device right here. All right? Washing machines. How many are grateful for washing machines? Oh, man, washing machines are a blessing. You know, you know, growing up, we didn't have a washing machine at home. I had to go to a laundry, and actually, you know, I would help out my parents with that. So once a week, I would go to a laundry that was near our apartment, and I'd be the one in charge of washing the clothes and, and bringing them and stuff like that. And I'm like, thank God I'm not going down to a river, you know, with two rocks to try to... Those days are long gone, God, because somebody, you know what they did? They manufactured a washing machine with the purpose of what? Of cleaning the clothes. All right? You go home, you have this beautiful appliance in your kitchen, okay, called a microwave. Whoever created the microwave wanted you to be able to heat up stuff and for it to be quick. You don't have to be there 30 minutes, you know. I remember growing up, you know, as a little kid, five, six years old, you know, when I wanted, you know, to drink something hot, my mom would put it in a bottle inside of a pan in hot water and just let it boil. And I was just like, how long is this thing going to take? Now you just put it on the microwave for 30 seconds and you stand in front of it like, man, those are the longest 30 seconds I've been waiting for in my life. But somebody manufactured and created that so that what? So that we could have food heat up, what? Instantly, all right? Let me tell you, God is an amazing designer. I said God is an amazing designer. And he put the ability in you and in me to accomplish what he created us to do. In other words, guys, look at me real quick. There's nobody here by coincidence. 
There's nobody in this room by coincidence. Purpose is when something or someone completes a specific function because it's built in the product. All right? And I want to read to you Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says this, for we are his workmanship. Whose workmanship? God. God sat down, all right, in his tool table. I don't know how it looks like. But he sat down and he took time to create you. He took time to create me. And the psalm says we were created complex. Some of us are more complex than others. <laughs> you know. Some of us, you know, are like a Toyota. Mass manufactured, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> in other words, and others like a Corniset car that they only make two of them per year. And every part, you know, is detailed. Let me tell you something. God is not in the Toyota factory. God is in sitting down and saying, you know what? This one, this is what I need him to do. This one, this is what I need her to do. And he takes his time. His time in creating you. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. You and I were created for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them, okay? When did God prepare these good works? Before. Before what? Since the creation of the world. He was thinking of you. He was creating you. So you know what's the purpose with this message that I'm giving you today? I want you to have a meeting with yourself. I want you to sit down later on today or tonight before going to bed, and I want you to have a meeting with yourself, a conversation with yourself. I want you to ask yourself, what is trapped in here? What is trapped in here that I don't know? Or what did you deposit in here that I'm not aware of? The second thing that we need to know in order to discover God's purpose for our life, write this down. Every human being was created to accomplish something specific. And this is a key word here that no one else could accomplish. So number one, God gave you the purpose that you have. Number two, you were created to accomplish something, listen to this, not random, something specific. Something specific. And it's so detailed, listen to this, that no one else could do that. Only you. Jeremiah 1.5. Look at what the Lord tells the prophet Jeremiah. He says, I knew you before I formed you. That's crazy. How can you know somebody before you form them if that person doesn't even exist? And God says, I already knew you. I hadn't formed you, but I knew you. Why? Because listen to what he says here. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, before you were born, I set you apart. So what did God do? He set you apart. And then there's a key word here, and appointed you. Okay, God sets you apart, and God appoints you, and that's why he says, I know you. Because when I made you, man, I was thinking about this issue that was going on. You want to know why you weren't born 100 years ago? You weren't born 500 years ago? You want to know why you weren't born in the times of Jesus? Because the purpose that God has for you is right now in 2024. And you were created to function in these times, in these moments. And everything, the way that you're wired, the way that you are, has to do. For example, you see little kids, you give them a phone. You give a phone to a one-year-old, don't know what to do with this. Have you noticed that? You know, you take somebody that's 80 years old, 50, <laughs> 60, you give them a phone. Sometimes they're like, man, I don't know what to do. But you give a little kid this and they know exactly. Because, listen to this, the way that the world is built right now, God created them for this moment. God created them for this moment, all right? So you don't worry, listen to this, when you understand that God called you and appointed you and has a specific purpose for your life, listen to this, you don't worry about being a copy. You don't worry about competition with somebody else because you know that there's no competition for you because what you have is specific for you. 
You understand what I'm saying? There could be a million preachers on the earth right now. Nobody preaches like I do. Why? Because the way that I do was made for the way that I am. And the problem that we have with preachers, for example, is that we'll go on Instagram and look at this person's message, that person's church, what happened here, what happened, and you fall into this competition. Why isn't it happening for me? Well, you were built for something specific that God has for you. Figure that out. And you stop competing. Athletes, I know that I have people in the room that are competing in schools and trying to be better. Okay, listen to this. Your competition, all right, your competition is not trying to look like the other player or the other person. You don't need to try. It's discovering who you are and what God made you for. Because no one's going to do it like you. No one's going to do it like you. Man, I wish I would have put this picture up. I had it and I forgot to put it, bro. I'm going to see if I get it for the second service. It's this picture of Michael Phelps and he's swimming. Michael Phelps is a great Olympian swimmer. Uh, he won, I don't even know how many gold medals, but every time he was on the pool, it was like, you're competing for second place because you're not getting first place. That guy's like, and you see him swimming and he's focused on the goal and you see the guy next to him looking at him. He's looking at where he needs to go. The other guy is looking at him. Your competition is not the other person. Your competition is discovering what God put in here and doing it better than anybody else. And you know why you're going to do it better than anybody else? Because you were created specifically for that. So competition ends. And you start to be happy with yourself. You start to be excited for what you got going on. You get to get to a place, listen to this, of satisfaction and completeness. Isn't that an amazing way to live? When you're not looking at what this person is doing or what the other person is doing, but you get to a place of being content when you discover what when you discover your purpose so listen your purpose becomes your passion it wakes you up in the morning okay i didn't wake up this morning because the alarm sounded like oh what's it today oh sunday oh man i gotta go preach bro oh man let me see if i have somebody on the phone that i could call for them to do that because man i hate coming up here on sundays and you know speaking the word of god no my purpose gets me up in the morning. I can't wait, man. It's Sunday morning. I'm going to speak to your children about purpose because you know what my goal is as your pastor today? That each of you guys, each of you guys, everybody in this room, everybody watching, would discover your purpose and then you go ahead and do it. You know how amazing that would be? If we each discover a purpose and we go ahead and do it, it's what keeps you going when you're tired. What keeps you going when you're tired? Purpose. Man, days are long. This is the way that I like to say it. Days are long and weeks are short. When it happened, the lady is like, oh, my God, what a long. And then the week, you close your eyes, it's like already Friday. It's like, what happened to this week? It just went by. But what keeps you going when you're tired is purpose. Purpose is an antidote to depression. When you're clear on your purpose, man, you don't even have time to get depressed. Why? Because you have a focus in mind. You have a purpose. You're going after something. Listen, it gives you joy and opposition. Because you know that the, the, the light and momentary trouble that you're going through is just that momentary and light is going to pass. Why? Because you know that your purpose goes beyond that. I'm going to tell you something. In this world, Jesus said, we're all going to have difficulties. But they're not going to last. Okay? A crisis is for a moment. The crisis ends. It has a beginning and has an end. So when you have a purpose in mind, you're like, I'm going to outlive this crisis that I'm going through right now. The problem that we have with people is that they make stupid decisions when they're in crisis, thinking that their crisis is going to last for a lifetime. And then you leave the country. <laughs> you sell your house. You do this, you do that. And then when the crisis passes, you're like, why the heck did I do that, bro? How did I even get into that? It's that you didn't understand. That was just for a moment. But you know what? There's purpose you know, for what you're doing, what you're supposed to do, okay? When you understand your purpose, you can't be stopped by no one. You can't be stopped by no one. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that nobody can limit you. Nobody can put a cap on you and say, hey, that's it. No. Your purpose is much greater than that. As for, oh, I'm going to say this to the students. I know parents, you guys are here. But I'm going to say this, that I tell my daughter, 
All right? And I tell her, and maybe you don't agree with what I'm going to say, but I have the mic on, so I'm going to say it, bro. I'm like, education's not everything. You know how many people I've seen, they've busted their bus in education, and they're working for somebody else. They're working in a Burger King. They're working here. They're working there. I know so many people that got a master's, that got a doctor's, that have never worked in their degree one day in their life, but they're paying I don't know how much money in, in, in funds of, of, uh, of loans that they did. You know what I tell her, what I'm telling my kids? Make sure that you discover the purpose that God has for you. And whatever it is, then you go after that. But the rat race is everybody got to go to college, everybody got to go to university, everybody got to do something. Who said that? A little crazy with what I'm saying right now. But for me, purpose is the one that determines what I'm going to go to college for. The moment that I discovered that God was calling me to be a pastor, to preach this word, to teach, that's when I went from one college, I changed my career, and I said, you know what, now I'm going to theological school because I want to do what I'm going to do it the best way that I can. I need the tools to do it. And then I left the school that I was going to, and I went to the school that I went to. But what determined that? What determined that was purpose. You guys understand what I'm telling you? You guys are looking at me a little scared today. But I have a lot of, a lot of things to say about this, all right? And that's why as your pastor in this church in Numa, one of the things that I'm always so excited to speak about and tell you about is growth track. Growth track is a three-step process. It used to be four, now it's three. Designed, listen, designed to help you discover your purpose. Designed to help you figure out the way that you're wired that is different than me. That whole growth track thing is every Sunday. Today we're having step two. It's free. You don't need to pay for it. I know people that go to these seminars and pay $2,000 to sit down with Tony Robbins. They pay this money to go with that person to get motivated, to try to figure out what they're supposed to do. Listen, I got something here for you. You don't need to pay anything, bro. Just go three weeks to that growth track and figure out the way God created you and start walking in that. And as you do, you're going to start blessing the life of many people. Because that's going to be my third point. I'm going to get into that in a moment. How many people die without ever figuring out, okay, what their purpose was in life? And I'm going to say it like this, all right? Salvation is God's gift to us. Discovering our purpose is our gift back to God. Salvation is free. He gives it to you. Oh, man, it's his gift. We don't deserve salvation. He gives it to us. But that I discover my purpose, man, is my gift back to him for everything that he does for me. The apostle Paul said it this way, Acts 20, verse 24. He says this, but I do not account my life of any value or as precious to myself. This guy's crazy. He says he accounts his life for no value. Or precious to him. Listen to what he says. If only I may finish the course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus. To testify to the gospel of the grace of God. He says, the value of my life is to finish the course that God set before me. What race are we running? Are we running our race or are we trying to run somebody else's race? You need to figure out what your race is. You might be good at the 100 meter. You might be good at the 200. You might even be good at the relay. You might be good in the marathon. You got to figure out which is your race. And that's the track that you need to get on and start running. That's what Paul's saying. That's what my life is for. And the third thing that will help us discover our purpose, understand this whole thing, pay attention to this. This is a big one. There's an area of gifting inside of you to make a difference in this world. There's an area of gifting that is where? Where is it? Inside of you. To make what? To make a difference. Where? In this world that we're in. Proverbs, verse 18, verse 16 says this. Proverbs chapter 18, I'm sorry. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16. A person's gift makes room for him, and brings him before great people. A person's what, guys? A person's what, according to that verse? A person's 
gift makes room for him. What's going to make room for you and for me? The gift that we have inside. And what will that do? It will bring you before great people. I want to say it to you like this. Your gift will make a way for you. You will be known in this world. Let this settle in your heart, guys. You will be known in this world for your gift. You will be known in this world for your gift. Can I say this? Discover your gift and serve it to the world. Discover your gift and serve it to the world. We talk about people that are great. Because of the gift that they have and the way that they've served it to the world. This week is the Masters Tournament. Any of you guys like golf in this place? Some golf guys, John? You know. And you have all these guys that are top of the leaderboard. But you still have some guys with a camera following who around? Tiger Woods. And Tiger Woods, already his best years are behind him. But you still have, you have like who are the top on the leaderboard. And then the segment on Sports Center is like a 10-minute segment on Tiger Woods. I'm like, bro, these guys are busting their butt. They're like one, two, and three. Let's talk about Tiger. And Tiger Woods made a lot of mistakes in his life. I'm not here to judge his character, his morale, none of that stuff. All of us know his story. But you know what that guy did? He had a gift and he served it to the world. And that's why we still talk about him. And people still want to see that gift. And they're like, man, I wish Tiger was on top of that leaderboard. Because when Sunday comes around and you had him on the top, you're like, man, I'm watching golf. Even if you didn't watch golf. You have people around the restaurant standing by, okay, let me see when it's this time to hit. Now you just say, oh, so-and-so won it. Ah, okay, that's good. But when you have a gift and you serve that gift to the world, then people want to see you. People want to hear you. It's like, what does this guy have to say about this? You know? One of the craziest guys alive today, I think, is Elon Musk. Elon Musk is crazy, just crazy. Like, he's one of those people, who, like, he's like a genius, so he's like crazy. So you can't have a normal conversation with him because just he's thinking of other things, you know? He's thinking, like, how to live in space and stuff like that. You're thinking of, like, how do I pay my rent on Friday? <laughs> he has money to pay all our rent for the rest of our lives, you know what I'm saying? But you hear somebody like that, and you say this, what a gift this guy has. I have a Tesla parked outside. And I have that Tesla out there, and I'm like, boy, this guy was so smart in creating this thing, man. He had a gift to discover. He had a gift to create. He had a gift to ask questions. You know that asking questions, you know, is not all bad? Because when you ask questions that you want to know, you want to grow. You want to know what's happening. You want to be challenged. You know, so I'm telling you today, all right, there's a gift inside of you. And, uh, and I want to say this also, you know, because I think it's important. Don't do what people tell you you got to do to become wealthy. You know, there's so many things you turn on today. Oh, if you do this, you're going to become rich. You do this seminar over there, you're going to become rich. I want to tell you, do what you were born to do, and you'll make money. Do what you were born to do, and your provision will be in that. Are you guys getting this that I'm telling you guys today? Gift is not something we learn is something that God gave to us. Gift is not something we learn. It is something that God gave to us. So we need to discover our gift. We need to stir it up. I want to tell you, stir up the gift that is inside of you. Stir it up. Start thinking about it. Start thinking about it. Start putting your mind to it. Start planning. Then work at your gift. Work at it. Try to get better at it. Polish it. All right? And then serve your gift to the world. And when you do that, you'll make a difference. Maybe you're in this room this morning or you're watching online. As a pastor, I can't take away the problem that you're going through. You might be facing a big problem right now. You might be facing a big crisis right now. I can't go like this. All right, come to the front. I'm going to pray for you. And then the problem leaves. 
No, I can't take away your problem. But you know what I could do? I could focus you on your purpose. And if I focus you on your purpose, you know what starts to happen? You start to get excited about yourself. You start to get excited about life. And all of a sudden, the problem starts to become smaller and smaller and smaller. Because when you start to do that for which God created you, man, it starts to become exciting. It starts to become fun. Life starts to become fun. So don't focus on your problem. I'm going to say like this, focus on your purpose. And you know what? Focus on people that have similar purposes. And let's do it together. Together, man, let's make a huge difference in this world as we put our purposes together. You know, a lot of churches are built around the gift of the pastor. And then the whole church is to serve the pastor. This is not the way that Numa works, bro. You know what? I'm not here for you to work around my gift. My gift is my gift. I'm serving it to you right now. You know what I want to help you do? I want to help you discover your gift and that together we can make a difference for God in this world. It's a little different. So as we talk about purpose today, these are some questions as I close that will help you discover purpose. These are some questions as you think. Here we go. What are you passionate about? What is something, man, that constantly you're passionate about, just comes out of your mouth? You start telling people without even them asking you about this, you know? When do you feel the most fulfilled? When do you feel the most fulfilled? When you're doing what? That's why some people actually live for the weekend because they feel that I have a job Monday through Friday, which I hate, and I don't want to be in that. On the weekend, I finally have time to do that that I'm passionate about. You know, and how about if we trade that Monday through Friday that you're not passionate about and Monday through Friday and Saturday and Sunday you do what you're passionate about. You know, another question, what do people say that you do well? What is something that you do that people say, man, every time you do that, man, it comes out good. You know, like no one does this the way that you do. You do this good. What would you do for the rest of your life if money was not an issue? The other day, there was a jackpot in the lottery. You guys saw that? Like one point, I don't know how much, billion dollars. And I was like, bro, that's a lot of money, man. They're like, what do you do with all that money? I'm going to be honest with you. I was tempted to go in there into public getting a $20 bill. Man, I'm going to buy like 20 of these. It's like, that's a lot of money, man. What would you do in life if money was not an issue and you just had time on your hands? What would you dedicate your time to? That talks about your purpose, okay? What in the world gets you angry that you wish you could fix? What is there around the world right now that gets you upset and you're like, man, I wish I could fix that. I have an idea to fix that. Maybe you think about kids around the world right now that don't have clean drinking water. And you're like, man, I wish we could provide water for these people that are in that village over there, in this place over there. Man, that keeps me awake at night. I have a friend that does that. He does wells. They dig wells over there in different countries so that people have clean drinking water. And they don't have to walk like three hours to, to, a, a, to a river and then go up with buckets. What is a problem in the world? Maybe it's a disease. And you're like, man, I wish I could cure that disease. Who knows if I have the person that's going to find the cure for cancer sitting right here in front of me today. And you're passionate about that. You're like, man, so many people in my family have died with cancer. They've died with this. They've died with that. Man, I want to invent a cure for that. It has to do with your purpose. Okay? And the last question, what are some of the obstacles that you have overcome? And what have you learned that you could tell others that are going through similar situations. A lot of times you've gone through stuff in life and you're like, man, where the heck have I gone through all this? And then all of a sudden you sit down with somebody that is going through something similar and they're like, bro, you just blessed my life with this that you shared. How did you do this? Well, look, I did this and God did this and this happened. Wow. All those little things right there will help you discover the purpose that God 
has for your life. So I want you to close your eyes for a moment this morning. The first thing I told you this morning is that you have a God-given purpose. And I want that to sit in your mind, sit in your heart. Once again, you're not here by coincidence. You're not here to fill a space and time. Number two, I said that you were created to do something specific. You created to do something specific. No one does that the way that you do it. And number three, I told you that there's a gift, an area of gifting that God has placed inside of you. Discover that gift. So I want you to take a moment and ask the Holy Spirit, what is he telling you right now through this message? What is he speaking to you? Once again, this series is called You Ask For It. Because this was one of the top questions that you guys had as a church. How do I discover my purpose? And maybe you're seated there and you're like, man, I have to go do that growth track thing, Pastor, that you talk about. I want to discover it. Well, today's a good day to start. Maybe you did it five, ten years ago already. We've been doing this since 2016. We did it eight years ago. And you're like, man, I don't even remember what the gifts were. Go back. Go back. Maybe some things have been polished. Maybe some passions have been removed and you're passionate about other things. This is the moment. What is the Holy Spirit telling you today? Just ask him, Holy Spirit, what are you telling me? And let him speak to your heart. Let him speak to your heart right there. Let him speak to your heart. Take a moment and just let him speak to your heart. a specific invitation this morning before I get to the invitation of those that want to bring Christ into their life and it's to those people that might be here or watching online and your purpose you've quieted it because of circumstances because of situations because of things that you've lived in your life it's sort of like you buried it and you had like a treasure and you know you have that treasure you know you have it 
you've seen it and and you've sort of like just put it down put it down put it down maybe because of something someone said maybe because of a tough situation you went through maybe because something physical that you're going through right now but just that gift you've put it down but you know God gave you that gift you know God gave you that gift and you know that that gift once you walk in it man just like a difference is made and and if that's you this morning and the Holy Spirit is saying hey I, I need you to bring this out I, I want to use you in this area you know I want to pray for you you know because I just really feel that strong in my heart this morning so if I'm speaking to you today and that is you right there where I just raise your hand just that gift has been buried father in Jesus name look at all these names that are hands that are going up just keep your hand up father right now look at these people that have their hands up father they are recognizing Lord that there's something precious that you've put inside of them and father in Jesus name give them the boldness today to put aside whoever put a constraint on that whoever uh, I just spoke about that, Lord, and maybe they buried that treasure deep inside. But today, Father, today you've brought me here to speak into that, to help that dig that thing out, Lord. Because this world needs, Lord God, what you've given them. And Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray that you will not leave them alone. Father, you will not leave them alone, even throughout the day today, even throughout the week, Lord, until they don't make the provisions necessary, Lord God to start bringing this out once again, Lord. Give them the boldness, Father God, to stand firm. Give them the, 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 just the boldness to go over fear, Lord God. And Father, let them find delight in walking in the gifting and in the purpose that you've given them. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. You guys can put your hands down. Now I want to speak to all those that are in the room today that have not invited Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior. Jesus talking about his purpose, he said something amazing. He said, the Son of Man came to seek and save those that were lost. Who were lost? You and I were lost. And Jesus came to seek and to save us. To save us from what? From our sins. From our brokenness. And today in this room or watching online, if you invite Jesus Christ into your heart, let me tell you something. The Bible says that your sins can be forgiven. And that you become a son or daughter of God and you start living for the purpose that God has for you. Because you can't take that step of living for something that God created you for when you are apart from him. But when you come to Christ, you know what? Now you start having fellowship with God. And now the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you. And now you have the one that created you and that made you wonderfully made guiding you in all these steps. So if that's you and you're here today and you say, Pastor, I want to make that decision. What do I need to do? Whether you're in the room, whether you're watching online, I want to lead you in a prayer to invite Christ into your life, to find forgiveness for your sins and to receive the gift of eternal life. So right there, if you bow your heads real quick, just everybody in the room, heads bowed, eyes closed, and I'm going to make this prayer. This prayer goes something like this, Lord Jesus. I invite you into my life. Today I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you so much for dying for me on the cross to pay for my sins. Today I invite you to my life. Receive the gift of eternal life. And I ask you, Jesus, that you would fill me with the Holy Spirit so that he could help me live for the purpose that you have for my life. In your name I pray. And all God's people say, amen. And amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Just give it up for him. All right. So before I dismiss you guys, if anybody in this room today or watching through the camera made that prayer for the first time of inviting Christ into your heart, let me tell you that it's the best decision that you're ever going to make. And I don't say that just because I'm supposed to say that. I say that because I know that life change starts with that decision of inviting Christ into your life. So if you made that decision, please let us know. All right? In front of you guys, you're going to find that there's a connect card in the seat pocket in front of you. Take that connect card out. Fill it out with your information. All right? And where it says, my decision today, you're going to put a check mark where it says, I'm committing my life to Christ. 
Now, if you're recommitting your life to Christ, you put a check mark where he says you're recommitting your life to Christ. If you walked away because of different things. And at the end, you could take that connect card and you could put it in the mailboxes that we have up in the back of the wall. All right, you put that in there. Or you could come to the welcome lounge that is through the glass doors to the, to the left-hand side. I'm going to be there. All right, and I would love to know you in person and pray for you if you made this decision today in your heart. All right? The last thing we're going to do, all right, this is our moment when we give back to God. All right, this is our generosity moment. This is our moment where we give our tithes and offerings through our finances. All right, we make a difference. All right, we make a difference in this world. We could continue preaching. All right, we could continue sending our money to different places around the world that make a difference in the life of many people. And your generosity, Numa Church, allows us to do that. All right, so right there in your seat, you're going to find that there's an envelope. If you want to give with a check, okay, if you want to give with cash, you're going to give with a check, you write it to Numa, or you could use the digital platforms, whether text giving or Zale, so that you could go ahead and give through that. All right. But always understand that even a little part that you could give can make such a difference when we all do it together collectively, all right? Once you have those envelopes ready, you can put them on the mailboxes on the back on your way out, all right? So uh, we're going to take a moment now and pray to dismiss. So let's all stand to our feet. If anyone at the end of the service needs prayer for anything that I spoke about or you might be going through something, there will be people here in the front to pray with you. And like I said, I'll be in the welcome lounge to speak to any of our visitors or people that made the prayer to invite Christ into their life. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for your word today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're doing in each of our lives, Lord. I bless every person that is in the room. I bless every person, Lord, that connected online. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us, Lord, about the purpose that you have for our lives, Lord, for the way that you made us, for the way that you wired us, Lord God. And I declare, my God, that as we discover that gift, Lord, we're going to go ahead, Lord, and serve it to the world, Lord. Help us in this journey, Lord. And as we go this week, my God, that wherever we go, we can make a difference for you, Lord. Let us be light in the darkness and let us be salt here in this earth, Lord God. Let goodness and mercy follow us, Lord, all the days of our life. And I bless those that today are giving in faith and being generous, Lord. Multiply that giving, Lord, in each of their lives. And we pray and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Church, have an amazing week. We love you. All right. And uh, God bless.